I'm telling you, I saw him last night, Felix insisted. The other sewer jack stared at him out of the gloom. Overhead, he heard the thunder of wheels as a car passed over a manhole cover. At a golden hammer, he was standing not twenty feet away from me. His name is Fritz von Hallstatt, and he's the man we saw dealing with the Skaven. Sure, Rudy said, glancing back worriedly. And he was having dinner with the Countess Emmanuel and the Enchanter Drakenfels. What were you doing in the Golden Hammer anyway? It's where knobs go. They wouldn't let in a sewer jack if his clothes were made of gold. You don't expect us to believe you were there. My brother took me. He's a merchant. And I'm telling you that's where I saw our man, von Hallstatt. You're not from Nuln, are you, young Felix? Hef spoke calmly and helpfully, as if he were genuinely concerned with clearing up any misapprehension the young sewer jack might have. Do you know who Fritz von Hallstatt is? The head of the Nuln secret police, that's who he is. The scourge of mutant scum in our city, Spider said. A tick moved somewhere far back in the twin's jaw. Felix had not realized the twins were such great admirers of von Hallstatt's. And the head of the secret police doesn't go about consorting with Ratman. Why not? Because he's the head of the secret police, and the head of the secret police wouldn't do that sort of thing. It stands to reason, don't it? Well, that is irrefutable logic, Rudy. But I'm telling you, I saw him with my own eyes. It was the man from the sewers. Are you sure you're not mistaken, Manling? It was very dark down there, and human eyesight is not so good in the dark. I'm certain, said Felix. I've never been more certain of anything in my life. Well, young Felix, even if you are right, and I'm not saying that you are, mind, what can we do about it? We can hardly go about marching up to Countess Emmanuel and say, By the way, your majesty, did you know that your most trusted advisor has been sneaking around the sewers below your palace in the company of giant talking rats? Hef didn't even smile as he said this. She would ask you how much weird root you've been chewing and order her Kislevite lover to throw you in the cells, Spider said. Felix could see their point. What could they do? They were just ordinary watchmen, and the man they were talking about was one of the most powerful people in the city. Perhaps it would be best just to forget the entire thing. He was seeing Otto again this evening, was gonna have a fine meal in his townhouse. Soon he could be far away from here, and it wasn't his problem. But the thought nagged at him. What was the terrible and feared master of the Countess's secret police doing in the company of the Skaven? What hold could they possibly have on him? Right, lads, enough of this, Rudy said. Back to work. Host leader Tsarkwal Scab looked back at his storm vermin. They filled the tunnel chamber and the smell of their musk was sweet. His heart swelled with something akin to pride. These were big, burly Skaven, and their black fur was sleek and well-groomed. It matched their fine, lacquered black armor, and their rune-encrusted helms of black iron. They were the elite, well-fed, well-turned out, disciplined, as far above the lowly clan rats and slaves as he was above them. He commanded two dozen of the finest warriors his clan could field. In the coming war, this would be swelled by two hundred or more. He did not need the full force for this mission, that was simple. The elimination of some pink flesh man-things, easy. Gracier Thankuol had made it plain it would be so. Even though he didn't like Screequal's replacement, he agreed. He doubted he would even need the four claws of storm vermin to deal with some lowly man-thing warriors. Behind him, Thankuol gave a discreet little bark of impatience. The rat ogre which accompanied the sorcerer rumbled angrily. A little shimmer of fear passed through Tsarkual when he contemplated the giant hybrid's formidable muscles and claws. He would not want to face it in battle. It must have caused the Gracier a fair stash of warpstone to purchase from the packmasters of Clan Mulder. 
and from what Tsarkual had heard, it would prove worth every ounce. Yet he would not let himself be hurried. There were certain proprieties to be observed. He must keep face in front of the troops. He allowed none of the anxiety to show in his bearing, and he controlled the urge to squirt the mask of fear. He twitched his nose authoritatively, and then lashed his tail to get their attention. Two dozen of alert pink eyes turned to look at him. We go to the big stink below the man city, he told them. We go to kill five man things who guard the tunnels. They are enemies of the clan lord and have killed dead a clan brother, yes. Vengeance and man blood will be ours. Fight well and more breeders and more warp tokens will be yours. Fight badly and I will chew your guts with my own fangs. We here, host leader. They squawked thunderously. Glory to the clan. Vengeance for our clan brother. Yes, yes. Blood vengeance for our clan brother. Tsarkwal smiled, revealing row on row of sharp serrated teeth. In Skaven, it was a gesture of menace and his followers fell silent. He was pleased by the fear he had imposed in them. Yes, he wanted vengeance for Screekwall. They had belonged in the same birthing, had fought their way to the top of their clan together, had connived and killed and assassinated their way to power. He understood his brother's ambitions, and in so far as he trusted anyone, he had trusted Screekwall. He wanted the blood of the killers. It would in some way make up for the inconvenience of having to find another ally in the great game of clan politics. Perhaps Fankwall would do, if the Grey Seer didn't attempt to slip a saw knife into his back first. Well, only the future could tell. He covered his teeth once more and the storm vermin relaxed. He was looking forward to visiting the Undercity once again. He liked slinking through the vast, stinking maze that reminded him of Skaven Blight. It made a change from the hideously barren outpost of the Underway he had been forced to occupy since Warlord Scab dispatched him there. He was glad the stupid man-thing had enough sense to contact them about his problem. The gods were potentially a threat to the Great Plan. Nothing must menace their pawn before they took over the city. He wasn't sure what the plan was, but that didn't matter. He was a simple and vicious soldier. It was not his place to philosophize on the ways the thirteen lords of decay chose to order the universe. It was his task simply to kill the enemies of Clan Scab. That was what he intended to do. Felix was worried. It wasn't just the number of rats he had seen. It was the way that followed him that was worrying. He told himself not to be stupid. The rats were not following him. They were just there, like they always were in the sewers. His imagination was playing tricks on him, as it always did. He gazed round what the other sewer jacks called the cathedral. It was a major confluence of several of the city's greatest sewerways. It had been designed in a style that he recognized from the halls of Karak Eight Peaks. He called it the Dwarf Imperial. The dwarves who had built these sewers were refugees, he knew. They had fled from the World's Edge Mountains when their lands had become too dangerous. They had come to the human lands bringing a great store of engineering knowledge and a tremendous nostalgia for their ancestral homes under the mountain. The then Elector Count of Null had been an enlightened man. He had put their knowledge and skills to good use, improving the sanitation of his fast-growing city. They had responded to the challenge by creating places that resembled great temples rather than sewers. Mighty arches supported masonry that had lasted a thousand years. Intricate carved stonework adorned the arches, revealing the traditional dwarf hammer and the shield designs. The work had been made beautiful in its way, as well as functional. Of course, time had eroded much of it. Coarse patchwork of plaster and brick filled gaps where human repair teams less skilled than the original builders had been at work. But this place, almost directly below the Elector's palace, was a sewer fit for an emperor. Then, suddenly, Felix saw it. He saw how vulnerable those ancient master builders had made the city. He remembered Gotrick's tale of how the Skaven had attacked Karak Eight Peaks from the direction least expected. 
from below. The sewers provided a means of access to below any place of importance in the city. Teams of assassins or shock troops could be moved through them by a foe adapted to the darkness. They were a perfect highway for a Skaven invasion. The Great Walls of Nuln would prove no barrier to them. The watchers on the roof of the Temple of Myrmidia would notice nothing. The peril to the city was even greater if its own chief magistrate were in league with the Ratmen. The pieces clicked. He knew how von Hallstatt foes disappeared. They were dragged down into the depths by the Skaven. He would bet anything that a web of access tunnels existed which gave access to the palaces and walled houses above. If nothing else, a small enough assassin could gain access through the sewage channels, gross as that thing was. The question now was why? Why was von Hallstatt doing this? What did he stand to gain? The demise of his enemies? Perhaps he was a mutant in league with the forces of darkness. Perhaps he was mad. Felix asked himself whether he could walk away now, knowing what he did. Could he take the offer of a safe job alongside his brothers and leave the second greatest city of the empire in the hands of its enemies? It was infuriating. There was nothing he could do. No one would believe him if he accused the chief magistrate. The word of a sewer jack against that of the most influential man in the city? And if he revealed who he really was, that would only get him in deeper trouble. He was a known revolutionary and an associate of the dwarf who had slaughtered ten of the emperor's own elite household cavalry. No one would be too bothered if the pair of them disappeared. Perhaps it would be best to let things be. It was only then, as he came to that decision, that he noticed that the rats had vanished and the sound of soft padding could be heard behind him. We're being followed, Manling, Gotrek said quietly. Several groups, one behind, two taking tunnels parallel to us. There's more up ahead. Followed? By what? Felix had to force his words out. His throat felt constricted, and his voice was barely louder than a whisper. Skaven? Yes. We're going to be ambushed. Our scuttling little friends should be quieter. Dwarf ears are keen. What can we do? Fight bravely, and, if need be, die heroically, Manling. That's all very well for you. You're a slayer. The rest of us aren't quite so keen to get killed. Godric glared at him contemptuously. Felix felt the need to find an excuse for his fear. What if it's an invasion? Someone has to warn the city. It's our duty. Remember the oath we swore when we joined the Watch? He could see this made an impression on the Troll Slayer. Dwarves were always impressed by talk of duty and of oaths. You have a point, Manling. At least one of us should get away and warn the city. Best talk with the others and make up a plan. Tsarkual saw that his prey had stopped. They were huddling together in the passage and talking in low tones. He knew they were afraid. It had finally dawned on even their dim man-brains that they were being followed. He knew the righteous fear that the true Skaven warrior inspired in most humans. He had seen the look of cringing horror in many a human eye. The terrifying majesty and dignity of the Skaven form filled the man-things with awe. He stood taller and preened his fur with his tongue. At times, looking in the polished mirror of his shield, he almost understood their feelings. There was no denying that he cut an impressive figure even among the regal forms of his fellow high-ranking Skaven. It was only proper that man things should be suitably impressed by the master race. He gestured for the storm vermin to halt. He would allow the victims a minute's grace to fully savor their fear. He wanted them to understand the hopelessness of their position. Perhaps he might even allow them to beg for their lives. Some victims did. He knew it was a tribute to the impressive bearing he mustered. Host leader, should we not attack now? Maim slay the man-things while they are in confusion? Claw leader Gazat asked. Tsarkoal shook his head. Gazat had shown the true lack of understanding of the finer points of strategy. He thought it better to simply attack, rather than wait for the correct moment when their foes were paralyzed by fear. 
The host leader twitched his tail indulgently. No, no, let them no fear. When they spray musk and no hopelessness, then we shall charge, charge. Tsarkoval could see that Gazat was dubious. Well, let him be. Soon he would see the superiority of the host's tactical knowledge for himself. Host leader, they come back to our path. Doubtless they flee in panic terror. Prepare to meet them with fixed weapons. The ledge here was wide enough for two skaven abreast. The storm vermin took up position, their pole arms braced to meet the charge. Tsarkoval waited expectantly. Triumph filled his heart as the terror-struck man-things confronted his elite warriors. So full of fear they were that they didn't even stop their headlong rush. Blind panic drove them to throw themselves onto the blades. Surely it was only luck that allowed the sweep of the dwarf's hatchet to chop through both weapons. Yes, he could see more clearly now. The dwarf was so scared that he throwed at a mouth like a clan rat with rabies. He howled fearful prayers to whatever gods he worshipped. He knew he was doomed. Still, in his terror he was doing some terrible damage, as panic-stricken brutes often did. One blind swing clove the head of a trooper. The frantic thrashing of his axe knocked two trusty storm vermin back into the channel of the sewer. If Tsarkual had not known better, then he could have sworn that a skaven had leapt into the filth to avoid the blade. Surely not. A tall, blonde-tufted man-thing had joined the dwarf. He fought with a certain precision, too. A thrust from the short sword took another skaven in the throat. No, this wasn't happening. Four of his best warriors had gone down, and the man-things had not even taken a casualty. The furless ones had been lucky. He was filled with pride as more brave storm vermin leapt into the fray. Now he felt certain that victory would be his. The man-things just didn't know it yet. They kept coming. More worthless vermin fell before their weapons. Tsarkoval knew that he had been betrayed. Instead of elite storm vermin, he had been sent useless clan rats. Some cunning enemy back in Skavenblight must have arranged it to discredit him. It was the only explanation of how two puny surface dwellers could chop through half a dozen Skaven so-called warriors without taking a cut. Tsarkoval steeled himself to face the foe. He, at least, was not afraid to face the dwarf's hatchet or the man's sword. He was a host leader. He knew no fear. It was only excitement which made his tail twitch and his musk glance swell as the dwarf painted the sewer wall with blood with a flick of the small axe. Tsarkoval knew that he could take any man-thing, but he decided to hang back as claw leader Gazat tackled the dwarf. He wanted to study the foe's fighting style to his best advantage. It was certainly impressive the way that the dwarf caught the flying skaven by the throat and dashed his brains against the ledge floor. It definitely wasn't terror that made Tsarkoval fling himself into the sewage when he confronted the foaming mouth berserker. It was just that he knew that this was not the correct time to fight. It would be more elegant to take the foe off guard, by surprise, say, eh, when they were asleep. Less wasteful of Skaven lives as well. He would tell Fanko all about this as soon as he had finished his swim. They were after us, weren't they? Felix said, glancing around worriedly. He dabbed at some of the blood on his face and inspected the tip of his fingers distastefully. He was not surprised to learn that the Skaven blood was black. Don't be foolish, man Leng. Why would they be after us? Felix was getting annoyed at people telling him not to be foolish. Well, doesn't it seem strange that we managed to go for two weeks without meeting a single thing down here? Then barely two days after you killed that Skaven were ambushed? Come to think of it, it's only one day after I saw von Hallstatt at a golden hammer. Perhaps he recognized me. Gotrek flicked his hatchet forward. Black blood speckled the ledge where the droplets fell. Oh, manling, he couldn't have recognized you. For a start, you were dressed differently. And you were behind the lantern that Gant shone on him. All he could make out would be your outline. That's if he saw anything at all. Most likely he was too busy running. It slowly sank in what Gotrek had said. Or rather, what he hadn't said. 
he hadn't questioned the fact that Felix had seen von Hallstatt at a golden hammer. The other sewer jacks were back from inspecting the bodies. Good work, you two, said Hef. You can certainly fight. Might have left some for us, though. I thought there was some coming up behind us, but they seemed to stop when you two stuck in. Probably scared them away. Well, let's take a body and show it to the watch captain. Maybe they'll believe us this time. Right oh, young Felix. You're gonna carry it? Felix kept his mouth shut as he bent to lift the smell furry carcass. Even among the stink of the sewers, the smell of this corpse was offensive. Felix was quite pleased when, halfway back to the watch station exit, Half offered to take a turn carrying it. 